Alright guys, welcome back to Airworthy, and this video is going to be about transitioning from the military to civilian life. Okay, first, I want to kind of give you like a little bit of information. Well, I'm going to saturate you with a lot of information. I read through the manual, and I'm just going to kind of brief you on it. So the manual I went through is the Flight Standards Information Management System. I'm going to provide a link in the description below specifically to Volume 5, Chapter 5, Section 2. So this is my reference. This is where I'm getting all this material from. You can read along with me or just kind of use it as a guideline after watching this video. So I'm recording this video in February of 2018. So if you're watching this video at a much later date, definitely check the link. Things may have been updated. Part 1 is about the JSAMTCC program. Now, that's a really long abbreviation. I mean, just leave it to the government to come up with an abbreviation that you can't even say. What does it mean? It's the Joint Services Aviation Maintenance Technician Certification Council. Now, the way this program works is it kind of charts a course for you as a, as a service member currently for you to be able to get your military training to count towards civilian AMP license. The gist of it is an authorized person from your branch of service will fill out a form. That form is the CG-GEAE-2. This is the FAA's Certification of Performance Job Task. Now, you, you can start by filling this out. Uh, it's in the bottom of the manual, a reference to it. You can also look it up on the FAA.gov. But you want to start filling this out. Then you're going to take it to an appropriate office for your branch. And that office is going to process the data. Now, for those of you in the Coast Guard, you kind of got a leg up on this one. This program has been adopted by the Coast Guard for years. For those of us who are serving in the real military, I'm just kidding. Thank you for your service, everybody, including the Coast Guard. You guys are probably going to have a little more difficulty in starting this. Uh, you're still going to have to find the office. I couldn't tell you exactly what it is. I wasn't even able to go through this program because nobody that I knew was knew anything about any of this stuff. Nobody said anything to any of us, which is kind of why I'm bringing it up now. So you can ask around and find out about this program while you're still in and try to document all your training so that the FAA can go ahead and give you a stamp of approval saying that you're eligible to test out. So you'll go to the office with this form, CG-G-EAE-2. You'll take that filled out form to the office. They're going to process that data for you and they're going to reissue a new form. Now, you're probably going to want to make copies because you're responsible for your paperwork. I remember how it was when I was in. I always had copies of every single document that I had. You never know when it gets lost or stuck on somebody's desk. They're going to assign you a new form. This is going to be the CG-G-EAE-4. This is going to be Certificate of Eligibility. Now, what this is saying is that they've gone through your paperwork and your training, and they've given you the go-ahead saying that it's all legitimate, your time served counts, and that's going to be the document that you take to your local FISDO. It's proof that your quals are going to transfer over into the civilian sector. This is very important. You don't want to lose this, so definitely make copies of it, but always present the original when you're going to the FAA. This is essentially the equivalent of graduating a Part 147 school, so it's pretty important. Now, if you're interested in understanding more about the program, keep watching. The JSAMTCC program has policies and procedures that were developed by the FAA with AFS-300. Essentially what this does is it gives access to all aviation personnel of all military branches in the DOD a pathway to a successful transition using their military training as a method to apply for an AMP license. Now it's great for active duty service members but for those of you who have uh, already separated and don't have access to the base then you're going to watch the second part of the video. So if you found this useful, please leave a like. If you have more questions, leave a comment. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Let's go on to part two.